Hi, I'm Jake Wells, and I'm the... Uh, let me just start again. <laughs> Jake Wells and I'm the lower 48 states program director here at Yellow Dog Fly Fishing and I'm going to answer frequently asked questions for going to Louisiana. Jake, one thing that's always kind of confused me with with coastal fishing in the U.S. and Louisiana, do I need a fishing license? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so everyone that goes down to Louisiana and who's going to fish is going to need a fishing license um, and those are really uh, they're easiest to be bought online before you get down there. Super easy, just go online. Um, in the itinerary that we send to you a couple weeks before you go down, we'll provide the link in that itinerary so you can easily click on it um, and then buy your fishing license before you go down. If I forget to do that, is there a way to get one when I get there? Yeah, then if you get down there and you had forgotten to buy one, um, you can just do it on your phone. Um, each of the lodges also have Wi-Fi, so you can go, hop on your device, laptop, and just get it, uh, you know, that evening before you fish or even that morning of um, before you head out to go fishing. Jake, I had a great day on the water. I want to take care of my guide. How should I tip and how much should I tip? Mm -hmm. So, you know, tipping or gratuities are discretionary. Um, but really, we see where we all, we recommend that you should tip your guide um, at the end of each day um, in cash, um, or if you're gonna have the same guide for like each day you're down there, you can also tip them at the very end of your trip. Um, kind of a, a guideline is maybe 15 to 20 percent, um, and then for the lodge staff, um, kind of the same guideline, 15 to 20 percent. Um, and once again, you know, in that itinerary document that you'll receive, we'll give you kind of a, a dollar amount uh, to go by. You know, Jake, I spend a lot of time fishing here in Montana, and, and I've got plenty of trout equipment. Will I need to buy new gear to go down to Louisiana, or should the guides have everything I need? So as far as rods, reels, flies, tackle, um, down in Louisiana, the guides do furnish everything. So you really don't need to buy anything before you go down. Um, and sometimes it is more convenient just to use their setups um, because they're already rigged up, you know, dialed in, good to go. Um, you know, they know, you know, what, um, you know, what hook is used uh, to tie that fly. Um, they know that the, the knots are good, um, that, they, that they made their leader. Um, so they have confidence, you know, in their setups. They're already rigged up in their skiffs. Um, you know, typically when you get out to where you're going to start fishing, you hear your guide going to say, all right, who's up first? Go ahead and grab that setup there and let's start looking for fish. Um, you know, if you want to, um, you can bring, you know, maybe a 10 weight or a 9 weight um, with just a floating line. Um, depending if you're going to be there in the fall or winter or the spring or summer is going to determine whether you're going to need either a tropical line or a cold water line. Um, and then your guide, he'll also, you know, build you out a leader. Um, guides down there tie their own flies. They build out their own leaders. Um, so they'll be happy to, to build you out a leader and then tie on a fly for you. Nice. So I've heard redfish are good to eat. Will I be able to keep a couple redfish? Yeah, so down in Louisiana, um, it's a little bit of a different culture down there when it comes to the fishing. You know, I, I like to give people a heads up, especially if they've been mostly fishing out west, Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, you know, and they're pretty used to just catching and releasing. You know, down there, um, there are a lot of uh, light tackle, conventional captains that go out to take people fishing and they do come back, you know, with their coolers <laughs> full. Um, and so I want to make sure that folks, you know, they know about that. Um, but the fly guides down there, um, they like to strictly practice catch and release because um, they want to take care, you know, of their resource and, and their livelihood. What other questions do you have? Yeah, what's, what's the you know, best season to go down to Louisiana and, and what should I be wearing while we're fishing? Mm -hmm. So it is a year-round fishery, uh, to be honest, and 
you know, what you wear really depends on what season you're down there. Um, if you're down there in the fall through the winter, so let's say starting in October, November, I mean, all the way through February, um, I mean, you're going to want to come prepared, uh, you know, from head to toe. You're going to want to wear a beanie, um, you know, have a, a winter jacket, um, gloves, uh, some layers as well, um, and, and uh, you know, some, some good footwear. Um, if you're there in the spring or the summer, um, you know, it can be pretty warm to hot. And so you're wearing kind of a sun shirt, you know, sun pants, um, a buff, um, sun gloves. You still want to be covered up. Uh, but it can be more like maybe fishing in the Bahamas or Belize with what you wear. Uh, no matter when you go though, uh, we always recommend that you bring a rain jacket. I mean, that's a must. And then we really highly recommend even buying a, a pair of bibs um, or even a pair of rain pants. Um, that can really save the day. Um, and sometimes when you're running out into the marsh, um, there can be some, some splash and uh, you know, getting wet at the start of your day can just ruin your day, ruin your trip. So you might as well just spend the extra money, uh, make sure you're, you're protected. Um, for footwear too, um, you know, you're gonna want something like a, a boat or a deck shoe, um, you know, made by Grundens, Sims, um, Astral. Um, there's a number out there, but we do recommend some sort of boat or deck shoe to protect your feet. Um, if you're out there in the summertime, um, and you could even be wearing shorts, um, you know, uh, wearing just kind of low ankle socks is actually a good trick too, just to protect your skin from the sun. Um, but that's what we would recommend to, to wear when you're out fishing. Yeah. How long are those runs to get to the fishing grounds from the lodge? So it's going to depend, you know, on, on tides, um, on conditions. Uh, usually though, I would say that guides, uh, you know, it's very common for them to make 30, 45 minute runs, you know, in the morning. Um, maybe, you know, your guide will make a longer run in the morning, maybe up to an hour, and then he'll just start to, to work his way back towards the, the, the marina. And then on the back end of the day, you won't have as long of a, of a run. Um, and also in between spots, you know, you might run you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Um, but once again, that's just, uh, you know, a good guide. He's gonna wanna make runs to go find your fish. To start the day, are you, you know, walking off the dock at the lodge right onto the boat or, or are they trailering the boats to different launch points? Yeah, so the nice thing about the locations uh, down there that we book, it's super convenient from a fishing standpoint because each morning um, after breakfast and then grabbing your sack lunches from the lodge, you just step outside and your guide's already going to be tied up at the dock. You're going to see him coming down and he's going to say, hop in boys, let's go fishing. <laughs> um, and then at the end of the day, the nice thing too is he's going to be bring you right back to where you're staying and he's going to say, I'll see you guys same time tomorrow. How many fish can I expect to catch in a day? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, on a more serious note, I mean, that's a tough question to answer. You know, you often hear that's why they call it, you know, fishing, not catching. Uh, but there's a number of different factors. Um, and down in Louisiana, I mean, the big factor is going to be the weather, to be quite honest. If you have good weather, you're going to get shots at fish. You know, the guy's going to pull hard. He's going to try and put you in position to get to have those shots at fish. And then it's your turn. You also have to perform and uh, put that fly where it counts when the time comes. You know, down in Louisiana, if the weather's crummy, so is the fishing. <laughs> it can be tough. It's down there to, to make lemonade out of lemons when it comes to the weather. Um, but that goes back to the, the, the fly guides have spin gear too. Um, so I've been down there, you know, and I had a, a four day trip. We had two really good days of weather. Um, we had one kind of so-so day, and then we had one day that was a bust. Uh, but on those bad weather days, we put down the fly gear, picked up the spin gear, and we caught fish and, and had fun and made the, made the most out of it. Nice. What kind of fish 
are we fishing for? Is it all redfish or are there other things too? So down in Louisiana, um, the species of fish that you'll catch, it also depends on the season. Um, of course, redfish are king, um, but you know, depending on the season, you could also uh, have shots at sheep's head. Um, you could also have shots at a uh, big black drum, you know, cousin to the redfish. Uh, there's alligator gar down there too, um, as well as Jack Creval. Um, I would say, you know, during the, the fall and winter months is when you'll probably have shots at catching mostly redfish, black drum, um, some sheep's head, which they call, you know, the, the Cajun permit. They're, they're not easy <laughs> to catch. Um, and then as things warm up, you'll still have redfish, black drum, sheep's head, but then you also can find alligator gar and then those Jack Creval, which they call uh, the, the Cajun GTs yeah. down there. <laughs> Is it a crowded fishery? Can I expect to see other boats and anglers while I'm out fishing? Mm -hmm. So the number of anglers, the number of guides that you'll see kind of depends on when you're down there. Um, I mean, the fishing down Louisiana is no secret. Um, if you're there probably in the fall, I mean, that's the busiest time, to be honest. If you're there in, you know, October, certainly November into December, I mean, there'll be quite a few other captains that are launching to go out. And so uh, you probably will see more anglers out in the marsh during those months. Um, however, if you're there, you know, uh, January, February into the spring and summer, though, um, you're not going to see as nearly as many, you know, guides um, or anglers out. Um, it can also vary uh, based on the day of the week, you know. So uh, during the weekday or, you know, the uh, the weekdays, probably not as many people going out. Um, of course, the weekends, you'll probably have more anglers and, and guides out, out out in the marsh. You know, here in Yellow, we seem to be going to more and more exotic locations. Um, working with you on, on a trip to Louisiana, uh, will I get the same sort of experience uh, as far as, you know, trip planning, logistics, intel, uh, that I would get if I was going to go to the Indian Ocean and a place like, you know, St. Brandon's or the Seychelles. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and that's why we travel ourselves to these places. Um, I've personally been down to Louisiana, you know, half a dozen times. Um, and I know, you know, the logistics to get there. Um, and, you know, we're here to shoot you straight. Um, you know, tell you how it's going to be. <laughs> uh, you might, we might tell you things uh, or give you information that you might not want to hear, but it's, it's truthful information. Um, and I think people really value that, you know, at this day and age. But, um, and thing too is, you know, I sit, you know, in an office nine to five, Monday through Friday. So I'm easily reachable, you know, via phone, via email to answer your questions as you're planning, you know, your trip to go down there. Um, I can also give you ideas for things to do, you know, in New Orleans, in the city. Um, and, uh, you know, at the end of the, your trip, um, you know, my goal is for you to say, Jake, that was super smooth. You know, thanks for everything. Um, I want to go back again. Um. You know, Jake, for, for my program in Belize, we definitely recommend trip insurance for, for every single trip. Um, if I'm sticking stateside, traveling domestically to Louisiana, uh, is that important still? Do I still need to get trip insurance? Yeah, we always recommend trip insurance um, just because it covers, you know, if something comes up on your end. You know, let's say the day before the trip, um, you have something come up at work with your family and you got to just pull the plug and you can't go. Um, you know, so trip insurance is so valuable to, to cover, um, like I said, if something comes up on your end, because it's a lot of money um, and time that you're spending to go on these trips. Um, so it can just really give you a lot of peace of mind. Um, like I said, if something unexpected comes up on your end and you can't go on the trip anymore. Thanks for watching. I hope that was uh, useful and I'm always happy to answer more questions. So always feel free to call uh, or email and we'll see you on your next trip. For more information or if we can answer any questions you might have, always feel free to call us at 406-585-8667 or email us at info at yellowdogflyfishing.com. 
You don't leave that on a message a hundred times a day? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Just...